Is there enough? Is this available? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to hear it. Here. M Myers, uh, what do you set as sort of your personal goals when you look at this season? This coming season? Yeah. More consistent player. Uh, it's just that simple. Um, stay dialed, dialed with my routines, be focused, and be ready to go for whatever is asked of me. Do you, do you view this as the most important season of your career, sort of? Well, I think every season is very important. Um, I'll put it to you this way, and I'm going to keep it simple today. Normally, I'm sitting here giving you guys real long, articulate answers. Not this year. Um, You know, today, just today. Uh, I know as a player and as a person, last year was, uh, was not good. I did not play well, period. Um, but I looked at myself in the mirror. I said, okay, it's time to get to work. Let's, let's figure out what I can do. So I went to LA. I was there all summer. Uh, I worked as hard as I could. Got a lot of, really a lot of good work in. And I'm ready. I was put in a lot of different situations. I played pickup ball with many different guys, many different scenarios, and I proved to myself that I am indeed capable of playing and I can do many things on the floor um, to impact the game. Uh, Dame said you might have fouled out of the first few pickup games and uh, if there had been real refs in September. Are you, you think you're sort of playing with that edge now that you're back and it's, we're getting close to it? He may have exaggerated just a little bit. But I think to your point of uh, trying to make an impact and be aggressive, yeah. Um, I know that as a player that's something I have to do. I have to bring a, uh, a different edge because if I just try to go with the flow of the game, um, I'm probably just going to be out there. Um, and so, like I said, I uh, got comfortable this summer uh, on the floor because I was able to play. I was able to work with different guys and try to figure out different situations and, and put myself in spots that maybe I wasn't used to, like going down to the block and, and having to be effective and uh, just do what I can to, to impact, even though it was pickup, impact the game. And same thing here in Portland. Um, changing it up, trying to roll to the basket, et cetera. Um, I don't want to be one dimensional. I, I, I offer so much more. Uh, Myers, pickup, uh, working with a trainer, Greg's camp, whatever it is, what was the most beneficial thing you did this summer? What helped the most? And in, and in what ways, if you could elaborate a little? Oh, man. Um, it's a pretty loaded question. I, what's a simple way to answer this? I was just laser focused. Um, I came in, into the summer knowing I had a lot of work ahead of me, but that I was, I was very excited for that. Um, I can remember walking into my first day, getting ready to work out with Drew at 8 a.m. You know, I was up super early and I was, I was a bit nervous because he's worked with a lot of high-level guys, and I, I knew I, I could learn a ton from him, and I, I am capable of doing many things. But as the summer progressed, I just kept feeling my confidence rise more and more and more as I was using the stuff that I learned from Drew in the games. And, and so it, I don't know. I, I just think the laser, the laser focus with encore workouts, lifting, um, keeping my body right, eating the right way getting the correct amount of sleep, et cetera. Um, there's a lot of people to sacrifice for me this, this summer, and um, I'm ready to go. Myers, did you, did you do mechanical work this summer? As in, like, did you, did you change anything about your shot or, or in any of the way you, you interact on the court? And if so, could you expound on that a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, one thing I know about Drew now is that Drew is in love with the game of basketball, Drew Hanlon. Um, it was in a very, very wise decision for me to start working with him. And, and I'm very thankful for him and his, his staff sitting here today. Um, we did indeed work a lot on my shot. Um, <clears throat> when he was watching my film, I don't know the exact numbers, but Drew is a big stats guy um, when it comes to looking at 
different things if you rotate your feet or if you follow through or if you, uh, you know, lean back on your shot. So there was a few things we needed to correct. Uh, one being that even if I s just slightly lean my shoulders back 10 to 15 degrees, my shot percentage went from roughly somewhere in the 60s on like transition threes or a three where I was really set and, and kind of getting everything flowing to the rim. Uh, it went clear down to like 27. The problem for me is a lot of my shots were in that lower range um, and I was using incorrect form. So he, that was one of the things, staying square to the basket rather than turning was another. Um, and we just kept drilling the heck out of it every single day, every single day, every single day um, with the correct shot pattern. And so, um, yeah, we, we did a lot of work as far as getting your momentum going to the rim, um, staying square, and uh, not leaning back. Myers, after playing five on five here in Portland, mm -hmm. can you paint us a picture of what NERC looks like now? Say that again? Can you paint us a picture of what NERC looks oh, like? Oh, NERC. Uh, you mean physically or just? Just uh, You know, I don't know what was going on with this. When he got knocked in Toronto, uh, you know, he like had the dental deal going on. So uh, I only played against NERC, I think, for a, two, two days. Um, but I mean, he looks good. NERC can play. Um, you know, he's a load down low. Uh, he can shoot the mid-range. Uh, you know, the occasional step in three, maybe. Um, good passer, got, got good feel. So, uh, yeah, Nurk Nur can play. I mean, they, Has he changed any from last year? Can tell? I don't think so. I think he's very similar to what I saw last year. Uh, he's definitely s slimmed down, um, but is still able to um, play in a similar way. Myers, just how critical was it for you, do you think, to have found a trainer like Drew at this particular moment in your career? Talking to guys who have now worked with Drew two, three, four years, they're like, man, I wish I had worked with Drew when I came to the NBA. And I'm sitting here, man, I wish at the summers I had known Drew. But, uh, you know, everything, honest to God, everything is a learning experience uh, as a player and a person. Uh, I sit here today confident. Uh, I know it's, uh, there's going to be bumps on the road, there's no question. But I do feel that now I have a foundation, uh, something I can go back to. Prior, uh, you know, people always talk about like the 10,000 hours thing from the book Outliers. Don't know if you heard of it. But if you, know, you can, can repetitively do the same things, you're going to perfect it. The problem was with my shot, which a lot of people look at, of course, it's what I do. Uh, I would go in and I'd, I'd try to change something for absolutely no reason. Um, and then all of a sudden I was turning my feet and all, then all of a sudden I thought it wasn't about turning my feet so I tried to go back to something else and there was just no foundation. And now I have a plan and a foundation and uh, it feels good. Um, it feels really good because even if there was a day with Drew, for example, where I didn't shoot it quite as well as I wish I would have in my individual workout, I can come back that night or uh, I can come back to try to, you know, just say, hey, today was just an average day. Let's, let's come tomorrow and let's get after it again. Sure enough, I went right back to the plan and foundation and everything was fine. So it, it feels good to have something to fall back on. Um, there's a saying, I don't, I don't want to mess it up because there's a guy I speak with and he talks about the, I studied the Navy SEALs a lot and I read a lot of books about them this summer. And they said the easiest thing for them is basically if and when a, a nasty situation comes up, they just fall back on training. So that's my hope. I don't have to now think about my confidence and think about how I'm going to approach different situations. I just fall back on my training because now there's a foundation, now there's a plan. Same thing with those guys. You know, I'm not gonna sit up here and talk about everything they're doing, but they're putting you know, hundreds of thousands of rounds. They're used to it. You know, That's just what they do. And so now my hope is that um, I study, I understand, I figure out what I did, I move on. And I come back to the foundation and it just keeps building. Myers, can you elaborate on how you got in touch with Drew, whether you specifically seeked him out or there was someone who directed you to him and perhaps list some of the other players who have worked with him for reference? Sure. Uh, so, as I already mentioned, and I know, uh, I was not good last year. And um, it was hard for me as an individual. It was hard for me as a player. Uh, I'm sure it was hard on my family, you know, because it's stressful. But I went to All-Star and... 
I was there and I knew that Wes Matthews was going to be doing three, three point contests. So of course we got in contact, we were gonna have lunch. Went to lunch and we started talking and he <clears throat> wanted to come back to, he wanted me to come back to Dallas with him because Wes cares about me, wants me to do well, kind of looks out for me. Um, so you're gonna come back to Dallas, we're gonna talk about a few things and I'm gonna, you know, then you'll go back to Portland, we'll go, you know, we'll do our own thing. And he said, what are you gonna do this summer? And I'm like, what are you talking about? We're in the middle of the season. He's like, no, no, it's very important. You need to focus on your season, but you need to, like, you gotta figure something out. It's okay. He was like, have you ever heard of Drew Hanlon? I was like, well, I, I, the name sounds familiar. I feel like I've seen, you know, of course with the Instagram and social media, boom, that is <laughs> currently uh, the way things are. I was like, yeah, I should look him up. And so I looked him up and, you know, he's worked with Embiid. Uh, he's worked with Jordan Clarkson, Zach Levine. David Lee was his, was his first guy. He's, he's worked with Dwight Howard. He's worked with numerous bigs, numerous wings, guards, everybody. And, um, you know, I kind of reached out and said, hey, would you be interested? He said, you know, let's do a week and we'll go from there. And so I, my thought is he probably wanted to see, was I a worker? Was I willing to put the work in every day? And um, I knew that he had a great knowledge for teaching the game and I needed to learn. Um, you know, one thing I know about myself is that, you know, I, I guess I have a natural shooting touch I'm tall, I'm fairly athletic, but sometimes I don't always know how to use that athleticism or I don't know how to be in the right place, um, you know, to, to have Dame or CJ be able to kind of find that window of, of opportunity. And so I needed to learn. I, I crave being taught. And so that's why I went to LA and that's why I focused every single day. It didn't matter how tired I was. I was ready to go at 6.20 a.m. when that alarm went off. It didn't matter what the day before was. I was ready to go again because he was teaching me, he cared about me, he was giving me something to fall back on a plan, a foundation. Say it again? Not as much. Um, I still look through it, I still have things. Um, for example, a lot of the things have gone from now, the things I was looking at, yeah, those are still there and those are still a piece of me, uh, to now my journal is becoming filled with uh, a post progression that you know that Drew and I have, and my shooting keys, and, and my uh, you know all the different things that I that I tried to remember from all the UCLA pickup games, um, which was stop popping every time you set a, a screen, roll to the basket, make it easier on yourself, because then every three becomes so freaking important. Um, rebound on both ends. You know I'm not going to be out there probably for a very, very extended period of time. So I might as well just go after every single offensive rebound. Might as well crash in there and, you know, uh, just try to be more versatile, play with, play with energy. Myers, you've been one of the most uh, polarizing players <laughs> in, in Portland Hold on. this past year. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah. <laughs> one of the most polarizing players. Yeah. And uh, no matter where we go, someone has an opinion on you. Um, how did you deal with the noise and, and just from the you summer? Know. Yeah. Oh, I shut them up. I didn't really look at social media. That's the easiest way. I mean, um, you know, there's no doubt that, you know, confidence is a big thing with NBA players. Uh, you know, certain guys have a, a certain level of stature and confidence that's probably not going away. That's your superstar guys and, you know, on down the line. But I know for me, you know, confidence is, is something that I need. And I, now that I have the plan and the foundation, I, I feel that there's like a certain threshold I won't go below. Um, but it, anybody who sits here and, and tells you that it's, you, know, you can totally tone them out, no, you can't. Uh, and it's hard to see. I mean, what, who, who wants to be told you suck? I mean, nobody does. But it happens to everybody. Um, and, oh, man, I could go so deep into this question, but I'm not going to. I would say this, though. The, the people hiding behind their little screens would get absolutely destroyed by me in between the, those lines. They sure would. Okay, any other questions for Myers? <laughs> All right. Thanks, Amber.